uh, we were looking for uh, all these days the difference amplifier we are looked into the response we also looked into feedback the first and the foremost uh, circuit integrated circuit which is available in market for use of amplification is called operational amplifier and uh, a typical circuit which shown here uh, it there are of course the normal op amp has three stages but in designing we also have what we call two stage op amp essentially a two stage op amp is a op amp without buffers or the output circuits okay so there are two stages the first stage of course is the very high gain stage because of the diff amp followed by high swing relatively lower gain stage which is the second stage of the op amp and third of course is the buffer stage which drives the output a uh, typical uh, number of transistors required to create an op amp is typically 22 and may extend a bit here or there up to 30 okay so it's not a small uh, one transistor circuit it has a large number of transistors even for two stage op amp the number of transistors shown to you here are of course uh, the transistor related to iss has not been shown which may be more than two that is three one coming from mirrors for example so you keep adding such transistor you find as many as 30 transistors or at least 22 transistors are required to create an operational amplifier the two stage essentially says you have a diff amp uh, there are two kinds of two stage op amp one is the two outputs vo1 and vo2 the other is sing, this is called double ended output and the second part which is shown here on the right is called single ended two stage op amp single ended means output is only one we out okay now one can see from here of course there can be different loads okay uh, it can be mirrored loads or it can be constant current sources as shown here different loads can be given to diff amp as we did earlier so there is nothing big about that right now i assume they are current sources okay with a whenever there is a current source what is the output resistance of that transistor always r0 okay in which case it's not r0 or r0 parallel something like diode connection shown in the next stage then it will be g1 upon gm parallel r zeros okay whenever there is a diode connection we have proved n times that whenever there is a diode connections you will get 1 upon gm shunting r0 and essentially it may be 1 upon gm itself okay so here is uh, as i said the output of the first diff, two diff amp uh, two outputs of a diff amp are given to a uh, two amplifiers one on the left one on the right what kind of amplifier do you see this this is a p channel device so input is p channel input device is not n channel which is receiving input okay and what is the load for that for example for m5 m7 is acting like a load which can be a current mirror load or any other load which you can create there is that clear now this means which kind of amplifier it will be single stage source is here so where common source amplifier this is a normal common source amplifier with p driver is that correct with p driver so not much different between analysis of n channel drivers or p channel drivers is that correct in cmos normally what we do we have n channel drivers with a p channel loads here we have a p channel driver with n channel loads okay so whatever gain of diff amp see vo1 will be proportional to vns okay which is then given to the input of the next common source stage which will have some gain a2 okay so what will be the net gain at the vo2 or vo1 v out 1 v out 2 if a1 is the gain of diff amp and a2 is the gain of the output stages then the net gain is a1 into a2 that's what we essentially do in a two stage op amp so will this gain be then much higher what is typically gain of a diff amp do you expect what is typical gain of a diff amp gm times ro1 parallel ro2 or ro3 parallel ro4 ro's are typically order of mega ohms 
is that correct? Typically order of mega ohms. GMs will be order of at least 10 to the power minus 3 or minus in between minus 3 minus 4 amps per volt. Okay. So, typical value will get gains of around 1000 or 5000 kind of things can be achieved through only DFAM. Is that correct? The gains of a DFAM can be as high as 10 to the power 4 okay, or even higher sometimes depend on the GM values you choose. ROs value on what these depend on GM and ROs both it is depend on the ISS is that correct. So, choose your ISS to get the possible gain values okay. Now, once you decide that DFAM has this much gain and you have another gain stage which may have again GM times parallel RO of this okay and you adjust the if the currents are same for all the transistors one can still get some amount of gains maybe 10 to 100. So, typical op-amp may have a gain of how much 10 to power 4 to 10 to power 5 typical op-amp will have gain stage gain outputs of the order of 10 to power 4 or 10 to power 5 okay or maybe and best design may be even higher but it may have some other problems if we gain too much gains on that okay. So, is that point clear? So, op-amps are no different from amplifiers which we have already designed already seen how they are solved okay. This is the second part of this circuit is this is called single ended output and what kind of loads we are using here mirror loads okay mirror loads ISS bias current 2 beta dash W by L into ISS under root of that is GM 1 upon lambda ISS is the ROs of that. So, one can evaluate what GM remember IS increase and IS decrease will have opposite effect on GM and RO. So, you may get reasonable gain if you still want higher make sizes double increase W by L okay that is the way gains are adjusted okay. okay. Uh, I will give you expression I have written down those expression but before those I just thought what I am doing I showed you this is my standard DFAM with the current mirror loads this is my input between 1 and 2 terminal is my VIN. This may be coming from the current source this may be your standard M5 or M7 number earlier we gave and this is your common source output stage okay. Please remember again this has a P channel device which is receiving signal output of the first DFAM is given as an input to the common source amplifier with P channel drivers and N channel loads. Okay, and channel loads. So, if we now calculate here are some expression which you do not have to think too much I just wrote down without either you were seeing for the DFAM for this DFAM first VO1 and VO2 will be GM1 RO1 parallel RO3 into V in VO2 will be minus GM2 RO2 parallel RO2 into V in if GMs are equal ROs are equal they will be correspondingly GM RO terms will appear. Then what is V out? V out is the output of V out 1 is the output of V o 1 as the input and that is G m of 5 into R o's parallel combination of 5 and 7. So, that is what I did G m 5 R o 5 into R o 7 parallel R o 7 into V o 1 substitute V o 1 from here. So, you get G m 1 G m 5 R o 5 parallel R o 7 R o 1 parallel R o 3 into V n. So, the gain is V out 1 by and by same it will be V out 2 it will be same if G m's are same V out by V n. So, these are the two voltage gains please remember G m's are getting multiplied. So, our R 0's are getting multiplied. So, essentially A 1 A 2 the two gains we are multiplying is that correct this into one this into this and this into this is A 1 A 2 is that clear G m 5 into this is A 2 gain G m 1 into R o 1 parallel R o 3 is the A 1 gain. So, A 1 into A 2 is the net gain of a 2 stage of fan is that clear first stage of the defam is again stage of A m 1 which is G m 1 R o 1 parallel R o 3 the second stage is again G m 5 into R o 5 R o 7. So, that is multiplied to the first stage gain. So, A 1 into A 2 is A final is that okay. So, without even evaluating all of it as we did equivalent circuit 
we can directly write this expression. Why? How can we write this directly? Because we have derived all of them individually every case. So, in future we do not have to keep deriving everything. We say okay for this, this is what it is. But to if someone said derive AB initio, please go back write equivalent circuit and solve all of it. Okay. But generally I mean for solving these we do not need that. In the case of single ended what will change? Nothing much will change. GM5 uh, just look at this. The output will be GM5 times parallel combination of 5 ROs of 5 and 6 and into whatever output coming here which is nothing but same as what we did earlier gm1 into ro2 parallel ro4 into gm2 ro it's still the same only thing is it's single ended on the one side and what is the advantage there advantage there that everything can be mirrored now from everywhere we don't have to put any current sources directly is that correct because mirror why i say mirrors are easier to create because once you create a mirror uh, source current source you can always mirror any number of places how do i pass on that gate of that should get to the gate of that with a diode connection on the one side. So, it will just replicate the currents in the next stage and if you change the size you can increase the double or triple or any number of amount of current can be pushed to the other side. So, it is much easier to control the currents and therefore, the outputs by just using the good current source as my once current source I create and that I mirror everywhere wherever I want additional currents is that clear. Now the only thing is if P channel mirror has to be what should I do? I last time gave an example uh, this from N channel first you will have go to a P channel the output of a second stage should be a P channel load mirror which then can be connected to the next P channels is that point clear to you? There was an example given to you first create an N channel mirror then the second part transistors this output or drain should be taken to the train of P channel which is mirrored to the next stage by again connecting source and uh, sorry drain and gate keep then going to p channels and if you want back n channel what do you do bring that to the next n stage at the output and mirror it again for the n so how do we go from n to p transfer p to n transfer so any number of times any stages i can keep transferring the current to n channel to p channel which may be ratio of w by l which i can create is that clear? That is the trick which we all follow. So, we do not actually use current sources normally. Why we do not do it? Because internally putting another bias is difficult. You know, VB you said normally what do, how do we get that current source? I need some bias potentials here. This may not be same as VB. In that case, I may have to put too many power voltage sources inside, that means connection from the pin so many pin connections should get in for putting voltage uh, current sources creation. So, we normally put one VDD create a current source okay, and then replicate everywhere whatever bias currents you need is that clear to you. This is a trick we follow because otherwise on a board we do not mind there are power supply two power supply le lenge, char pins le hai, se connect kar. but in chip what is the importance of a chip compared to board what I said so many transistors I want to put in a smaller area that is the integration I am looking. If I put additional voltage line somewhere I will have to leave some space for it that means I am not using that space for transistor. So, the trick in integrated circuit is avoid any extra lines if you can if you do not I mean if you need it you have nothing else can be done is that clear. So, this is just to give a out why I normally use current sources and not so much uh, uh, normally current mirror loads are this is just to that, but in reality on a board I can put all kinds of loads, resistive loads, current source, diode connect, all can connect physically anything and get any outputs. So, the theory was shown to you what purpose, what are the advantage, disadvantage of any kinds and if it is a discrete device you can use most of it. Okay. But in integrated circuit the first major thing we do is to avoid areas giving not doing any silica uh, any transistor there if transistor area is taken by something else I say forget it okay. that is what ICs are slightly different from normal discrete transistor circuits okay. no difference basically in performance only thing why do we some things okay. so yes no but on the like in this case 
I want the current to be taken from somewhere, where from I get P channel currents. So, the gate of this must come from a P channel side. If I want a current on this be fixed by me, let us say I want, so I, this P channel gate cannot be connected to N channel gates, so they must be connected to P channel gates. Now, P channel gate must be mirroring from other P channel device whose drain current must be the drain current of N channel mirror. Okay, so, you come from you create only n channel mirror, but pass on to p channel on the top and then move to p channel. When you want again n channel come down create to n channel driver and go back keep doing any number of times. So, Amesha dekho n channel p channel n channel p channel is that clear flip as I jayenge okay. So, this essentially what I was trying to say, I may not do details about this op-amp uh, basic entire internal circuit. As I said the three stage op-amp which is the real op-amp has the gain stage, the single so, uh, common source gain stage, um, high gain stage, common source gain stage followed by another circuit which is called buffer which is essentially for large driving of the output loads. To dry loads, larger loads, we need larger currents and since we need larger current buffers are ones which provide larger currents, is that correct? Buffer provides, if you want larger current, what will be their W by L's of transistors for larger currents, larger or smaller? If I want larger current, transistor sizes should be larger or smaller? Larger. Larger W by L and larger current, will that lead to smaller output resistance of that transistor? 1 upon i, is that clear? So, the larger the current R0 becomes smaller, is that point clear? So, all op-amps have very low output resistance because of the buffer stages we keep there. Okay. However, if you look at the input resistance, can you tell me the input resistance of this op-amp is higher or lower either of them? Please look at it, there is a gate connection which is insulated from source drain. So, the input resistance of a MOS transistor is practically infinite, but at least 10 to the power hundreds of mega ohms or at least tens of mega ohm and above, is that clear? Let us say it is a bipolar transistor, will still be Ri will be higher, their base collector base emitter junction is connected there. So, is still higher? Yeah, it will be very relatively high, why? The resistance of source which will be Re, Ree or whatever we call that is emitter resistor, how much impedance it will see at the input side on the base? Beta plus 1 times Ree, Ree itself is 10 to the power 5 or 6, okay. so 100 times that. So, in either case op-amp has large input resistances, is that point clear? Whether it is bipolar or MOS intrinsically gives because it is a MOS. But even in bipolar, because of REE, your input resistance is extremely high, and that is the property of a op-amp. What is the property of op-amp? The input resistance of an op-amp is very, very high. Output resistance, relatively, is very small. It is not RO of the transistor. It is the output resistance seen is very low compared to any other uh, resistor on the chip. Is that clear? This is the feature of an op-amp. What is the feature of an op-amp? Large gains, large input resistance and small output resistance. Is that correct? This is the property of an op-amp. Okay, just for the heck of it, there is a uh, op-amp which is also is an op-amp, but it is not called op-amp. It is called operational transistor uh, uh, transconductance amplifier called OTA. There are socho ki aisa kyun naam diya mein. Operational, abhi a normally to voltage op amps are voltage amplifiers. So, there is a operational transconductance amplifier or very popularly named as OTA. Okay. So, please remember OTAs are normally used in what we call GMC filters. GM means transconductance, C is the capacitance. These are continuous filters which are called what is continuous? What is the other kind of filters could be? digital filters okay, which are not continuous filters. So, GMC filters 
are essentially continuous analog filters which can be created by a few capacitances and an OTA. Okay. We will see that little later. So, is the issue clear? What is the advantage of op-amp over normal amplifiers? Normal amplifiers unless its emitter follower its input impedance is very low. How much? As low as few kilo ohms okay. HIB HI or RE is hardly QI by KT. Okay. So, that resistance is of KT by QI. So, that is very small. So, few kilo ohms okay. and now few kilo ohms is not what we are looking for. So, normal amplifier to op amp his first thing we achieved is very very high input resistance and comparatively much lower output resistance is that clear that is the feature and the gain is very very high 10 to power 4 or 10 to power 5 will be the, the only thing is this gain should be called open loop gain. What does that mean? No feedback is right now available. So, from output to input there is no feedback connections. So, the open loop gain is 10 to power 4, 5, may be higher than 5 sometimes. Is that These are the features which we are looking into a operational amplifier. Okay. Some of the characteristics which you all have done in the lab, hopefully I will just list them. A few things which is of interest in knowing the characteristic of op is, the first and the foremost worry is the input offset voltage. Now, what is the term we are talking? So, if you have an op amp, maybe which is a symbolized something like this plus minus V in 1, V in 2 are given names V in this. So, if you have V in 1 and V in 2 and this is V 0, we say in diffam first stage, if both inputs are 0, output should be 0 because no current output should be 0. Is that clear? An output of an op amp is if G m is 0, output is 0, okay. currents are 0 there. But if we actually see input 0 and still we see some output, in real life what happens that we thought that when V in 1 is made V in 2 equal to 0, output should have gone to 0. But in real life if I monitor even if I say some voltage at the output. Okay. That means, the V0 V in characteristics is something like this. Even when the V in is 0 here, there is an output voltage. Is that correct? There is an output voltage. So, the, the difference between when the V in is 0 or V in is uh, sorry V out is 0 to where V in is 0, this difference is called input offset voltage. Where should have been normally it should have crossed 0, it should have crossed from 0, it did not cross, it crossed on the left. So, it required it when I went to V in I found some outputs. Okay. Now, this occurs essentially we say this occurs because of the mi mismatch of the transistors. Okay. There what can be mismatches? There can be size mismatch, there can be what else? size is W and L mismatch, what else can? VTs can mismatch. Okay. So, if there are mismatches in the two transistors M1 and M2 or M3 and M4, then ideally we were expecting difference between them to be 0 which may not occur because one of them is not giving same outputs, is that correct? So, there is some finite output potential you may see. So, how do I get rid of that? Let us say it is plus and minus. If there is a offset here, I should put in this or this plus arm some opposite offset voltage here, which will actually cancel the other terminal offset on them. Is that clear? Let us say offset is plus three, 10 millivolts. So, I apply minus 10 millivolt at the input. So, 10 minus 10 is 0. So, always see in your op amp there is additional terminal given to you for offset cancellations. All that we do to, to put a resist, uh, this uh, resistive network with a power supply and keep varying that pot. So, that offset goes to uh, output goes to 0, is that correct? V plus you put a divider and change the voltage or change the resistance. Okay. See that when V 0 goes to output is 0, we say offset is cancelled. 
but in real life offset may be present. Okay. Of course, we will not look into this, there are two kinds of offset, which can be two kinds? Any random this is one of them can be random offset, okay. the other can be systematic offset. So, it is much easier to cancel systematic offset, because what is I am trying to say? Oh, every time it moves there, I will actually put minus there as if it comes to 0. Okay. But sometimes goes there and sometimes goes there, how do I do it? So, random offset which is essentially noise, noise related, they cannot be cancelled, but systematic offsets can always be cancelled. Is that correct? Is that point clear? So, one problem which you can see by this, the worst case offset could be VDD by the gain or VSS by of the gain, because that is the highest voltage, you know output divided by gain is the input. So, the plus or minus offset could be achieved, the highest will be VDD will be maximum output or VSS minus VSS will be maximum lower side in output. So, divided by the gain is the possible maximum offsets possible, is that correct? This is the maximum possible outputs it can swing, divided by gain will be the maximum minimum offset voltages, okay. cannot be because output cannot rise beyond VDD. So, VDD by AOL is the highest offset you can get, what are reasons? Because you are now saturating, there is no AOL, beyond that AOL does not exist in fact, AOL is 0 then. Once VDD reach AOL does not exist, if at this point there is no gain. Okay. So, the maximum possible is VDD or VSS. The second term of interest, second worry of all of us is to get CMRR as high as possible which is 20 log AD difference gain by common mode gain. If your mismatch occurs which is the first cause will also lead to CMRR because then ACM will not be 0, but will be some finite quantity that is GMs are not equal actually if you see the term it is GM1 minus GM2 occurs. So, if they are equal. So, it becomes 0, if they are not equal then there will be a finite quantity will occur and ACM will be present, then CMRR will be there which is typically what is the minimum CMRR I suggested you, 80 dB. There are op amps, I think some of the 725, 723 or these op amps may have a CMRR of 70 dB, but they are gaining something else, look at that some sheets and you see why they reduce the CMRR. Okay. Okay. All 741s are always greater than 80 dB and typically the highest of 506 AD 506 will have a CMRR of around 120 dB. Uh, third uh, interesting parameter for is power dissipation. Uh, please remember last time when I calculated there may be some this I did not show you correctly. Power dissipation is something like this. VDD minus VSS is the maximum voltage available to you, is that correct? So, when the current goes from here to VSS, the maximum voltage swing is VDD minus VSS. But there are too many currents flowing, one is of course this, other is because of this, then there is a mirror currents, okay. All, all vertical branches current going from VDD to VSS are paralleled, is that correct? VDD to, to ground, VDD to, to ground, VDD. So, add all those currents because they are supplied by same VDD and received at the same VSS. So, the power dissipation of an op amp is all vertical path currents multiplied by VDD minus VSS that is the power dissipation of an op amp. Is that point clear? Current in this path, current in this path, of course, this together is in this path, this path and mirror whatever or any other hardware which is like buffer output to ground any current path going from power supply to the ground that current should be added to all other currents parallelly going through because they are drawn from the same power supply reach to same VSS. So, VDD minus VSS this is plus of course because it will add minus of minus VSS. So, let us say 2.5 minus 2.5 means 5 fold multiplied by the net currents is the power dissipation of the op amp circuit is that correct. The fourth quantity of interest is called PSRR. Now, this is also very important. There is a lot of research can be done on this, but let us see only as a characteristic now. 
this is one of the major design parameters for OPAM, but right now we will not look too into this. Let us say the VDD and VSS are not constant, which can occur. Why it can occur? Do you know? Why VDD may not remain VDD 5 volts or 2.5 volts? It may become 2.5 plus minus something. Same way VSS can become plus minus something. Okay. Essentially, say some noise is overriding on them. And we know VDD will decide the current or VSS will decide the current, DC currents. So, what it will change then? All AC parameters are affected by the DC currents, bias currents, is that correct? GM is proportional to root I, lambda is uh, 1 upon lambda I is RO. So, you see any parameter, any DC thing change, the AC parameters are varying, therefore, gains may vary, is that correct? So, we want how much should be, how much we should tolerate the variation in power supplies this, so that gain remains within the acceptable limits. Why we say acceptable limits? Let us say I am getting a gain of 1000. So, I say if it is 995 does not matter, if it is 1005 it does not matter. But let us say I have a gain of 10, then I cannot say gain of 5 and 15 are same as 10, is that clear? So, the amount of tolerance at the gain stage you are outputs gain you are looking for within that range the variation in power supplies be allowed is that correct as long as you are within that you may say it is fine. Okay. This is called so what we are expecting how much is that tolerance allowed so that the output stage gain is not very much varying acceptable limit. So, we define EOL is the open loop gain divided by V out plus V plus because of this ratio whatever is the change occurring is decided by power supply RR plus Y plus because it is on the VDD by same logic PSRR minus is AOL divide. You can see what I am what is this essentially I am talking variation in output due to variation in VDD or VSS. These values are essentially called power supply. How do you really remove this much of the PSRR problems? You have done a, uh, uh, already the lab experiment on this. If I want to see that VDD does not change very much, but it may officially, I, I do not want it, but may occur, then how do I remove that? What do I do at the output? You must have seen, and if you have not seen, please see it now. This is your VDD terminal. I actually put a capacitor there, is that correct? Which filters out those frequency components which changes the VDD, is that correct? Have you seen any time or you are never connected? All power supplies should be connected through a bypass capacitors to minimize the variation in VDD and VSS which will improve your PSRR values, okay. is that clear? So, we do not really do great things in VSRR outside internally. Oh, internally we can do lot of things, but for external people also still you have a choice to put a capacitor, but what is the problem with capacitor because it is only some frequency it will remove, is that correct? Because it is a low pass filter, so it will cut some of them, okay. depends on different frequency which you are going to get, you may require n capacitor which will be very difficult to put. So, it is not that, so 50 hertz certainly hum which is called will be easily removed, okay. maybe 100 hertz can be removed, few kilohertz can, but if it is a mega hertz noise nothing can, it will pass in fact. Okay. So, that is the problem in, so PSRR is not just for these, it can also for any other noise and therefore, internally we do design to improve PSRRs, is that correct? So, do not think that a capacitor says sub problem solve, okay. okay. Now, the next value for us which we already discussed is the slew rate. What is the slew rate definition we gave last time? That how fast the output responds to input. Okay. So, it is dv by dt is the rise of output to its maximum value, which is essentially I said last time it is ISS divided by the load capacitance. Okay. So, this is also last time I already given you example in which showing one of the way the current ISS is fixed is requirement from slew rate, requirement from power and requirement from the gain. So, all three should somehow get matched 
to everyone's requirement. Okay. So this is essentially there are few more characteristics, but these are essential characteristics which all must be knowing prior to we start working on OPAM in a lab. Okay. Now here is something the first though we are in our course this is but just to get to what he has taught and little differently from what he has taught. You know why I say because I always want to show you little different from what others showed you. Okay. Here is something what others this is a OPAM. Uh, my ideal assumptions are RIs are very high because of this is a uh, basically I am looking for MOSFET DFAM, uh, MOSFET OPAM. There is an input source which has an R1 as the series resistance there. From the I define for OPAM two terminals, one called inverting terminal, the other is called non inverting terminal. It has nothing to do with minus and plus per se. The idea is if I put input here, the output gets inverted to the input. If I put input here, output does not get inverted and therefore, this names are given minus and plus. Okay. They are essentially V in 1 and V in 2 of a DFAM. Okay. In most non inverting amplifier, inverting or not, this is inverting amplifier, the V plus terminal is grounded, okay, which means V in now occurs between V minus and V plus. Okay. So, here is the ground. From the V minus terminal, I connect a resistance R2 to the. I will not solve this problem directly, but can you think which kind of feedback circuit is this? Output ko is zero kya, so kya feedback aega kya? Nahi aega. V0 zero, zero kya, so there is no R2 me kuch nahi hoga. Wo zero ho gaya uske upar. What does that mean? What is being sampled? voltage has been sampled. So, what is the kind of voltage sampling? Shunt sampling is that correct? At this note what is being summed up essentially? Currents. So, what is the sampling uh, mixing? Shunt mixing. So, this is shunt shunt amplifier is that correct? Abhi thoda sa socho ki shunt shunt amplifier mein gains kaise bante hain? So, this can be AOL nikala ja sakta hai, beta nikala ja sakta hai or AOL upon 1 upon AOL beta or you verify karke dekho jo mein nahi kar raha hun ki kya mere feedback theory se aya hua gain normal solving se bhi aata hai kya. Idhi aata hai to humari feedback theory bhi sahi hai aur humara ye bhi sahi. Is that okay? This is the trick I did not want to show you but I thought you should see say feedback circuit sitting right here. Okay, this is no connection. Huh? Please, ye jo idhar galti se connection dikh raha hai, wo nahi hai. Okay. okay, so equivalent circuit of a this is equivalent circuit of a OPAM is something like this. Ri, a current source, if you wish, across there is a resistance R zero, and this is your. R i is tends to infinity in case of VGS, in case of MOS transistors. This is G m VGS, this source, uh, this current going down, okay. this is your drain, this is your gate, this is your source, okay. this is equivalent of that, is that correct? So, we are saying G m V 1 which is VGS for us is equal to G m V 1 shunted by R0 which is the output resistance of the amplifier and a feedback resistance of R2 connecting between gate and drain equivalently same. So, if I solve this V in minus V this is V1 voltage V in minus V1 by R1 is this current I R1 is that correct? There is no current here. So, where can current go? only in R2. So, this current R2 is essentially V1 minus V0 divided by R2. So, V1 minus V0 by R2. So, V in 1 by R1 plus V0 by R2 is Vi uh, sorry V in again oh V1 sorry V1 1 upon R1 plus 1 upon R2 is that correct? It is not open kiya hai aur kuch nahin. Ye current or ye current same hona because there is no current here. Okay. 
okay. So, whatever current is coming must be going through R2. So, I R2 must be same as I R1 because what is the condition I put? R I is infinite. If there is a finite R I, some current can flow, okay. Then we may have to do little more calculations, okay. From the KCL, you can see from here this equivalent the current V1 minus V0 is going where assuming R0 right now is infinite for the sake of simplicity. Where this current will be going? What is that equivalent current? Current Gm V1. Ye dekho, yahan se shuru hua current, kaha path hai isko? Aisa jake, yahi path hai. Ye current or ye current same hona chahiye. Ek hi path hai. एक लूप में एक ही करंट होगा एक लूप में यहां से शुरू होने वाला करंट ग्राउंड में जाने के लिए ऐसा ही जा सकता है इज दैट करेक्ट सो जी एम वी वन मस्ट बी सॉरी जी एम वी वन मस्ट बी इक्वल टू वी वन माइनस वी जीरो बाय आर टू सो आई कलेक्ट वी वन टर्म्स वी वन इज इन टू वन अपॉन आर टू माइनस जी एम सॉरी दिस कैंसर माइनस जी एम इज इक्वल टू वी जीरो बाय आर टू फ्रॉम हियर आई कैलकुलेट वी वन Why I am showing you all this? I am trying to prove that that gain, larger gain requirement, why is coming? Which we normally give, how much gain we give? R2 by R1 minus R2 by R1. Tell us. Why is it not valid? In which condition is it valid? This condition I am showing you. So the V1 is V0 by R2 one upon R2 minus Gm. That was the first equation. In this equation, in this V1 place, it is valid. That I have not given. So if I substitute V n by R1 plus V0 by R2 or ये V1 ये term है into one upon R1 plus one upon R2 start collecting terms so I get V0 by V n is minus R2 by R1 और ये दो numerator और denominator पे दो बड़ी terms आ रही one minus one upon Gm R2 and one divided by one plus one upon Gm R2 we normally say in open the voltage gain is minus R2 by R1. That is what we have been telling people earlier. But I have now derived the expression which is actually this R2 gain is this expression. When this is equal to this, only when Gm is tending to infinity. Is that correct? Tending to infinity. What does that Gm? Tending to infinity means what? What is the gain we are? Which gain we are talking? Tending to infinity, open loop gain. So if the open loop gain is very very high, then Gm times that value will be very high. Gms will be very high, and if that is very high, these two terms can be one by one, and then the gain is R2 by R1. So the condition under which this output voltage by input voltage is minus R2 by R1 only exists if AOL is very very high. And what is the AOL I said you typically of a op amp stage 10 to power 5 is that correct 10 to power 5. Since the AOL is very very high we can then assume that the output voltage is just minus R2 by R1 times the input voltage. I will show you without doing this also we solve the circuit and we get it. But actually this is the analysis which we should look okay, under what condition I can assume that R2 by R1 is the gain function. Okay. This is very important in understanding not that this is always be valid in the case of op amps. Okay. But to prove that my case is correct I showed you this is how I explain that things will happen automatically. Okay, here is Another parameter of interest to us is the output resistance. Kya bola tha output resistance kitna hona chahiye? Bahut chota hona chahiye aap bol rahe the na to abhi dekho aata hai kya. How do I calculate output resistance of a network? Short input at the output apply a voltage source and the current starting from there Vx by Ix is the output resistance. Okay. This is my R out. So I say, अभी आप network का भी सब कर चुके हैं, is that okay? The current I X and again as of now I will say R zero is very high and I am neglecting current through R zero. Okay. 
I can put everything there. Circuit thoda bada hota hai, isliye main chhod raha hai iske. Where the IX current is divided into one path is this and one path is this. Is that correct? Yahan is node par ek current idhar ja raha hai aur ek current idhar ja raha hai. So IX is GM VGS, okay, and V1 is VGS as I just now said. So IX is GM VGS plus Vx, please remember Vx minus 0, why it is 0? Aapne ground kiya na, ye, ye terminal ko V in 0 kiya. So, Vx minus 0 divided by R1 plus R2, do resistance hai series mein, ye voltage minus ye voltage divided by the resistance. So, Vx minus 0 upon R1 plus R2 is this current. Gm Vgs is this current, so Ix is Gm Vgs Vx minus 0 R1 plus R2. Is that okay? Current divide, a current either gaya, a current either gaya, hmm? sum of those two currents. From here, I calculate Vgs value which is R2 upon R1 plus R2 times Vx. So, I solve Ix, I get Ix, and from there I can get Vx by Ix. So, essentially, what I am saying that will be also R1 plus, I will come back to correct values, but just see what value I am saying. R1 plus R2 upon 1 plus Gm R2 is the expression I got for R out. Is that correct? From substituting I get Vx and Ix relationship, so I find out that. From here, what is that you are again seeing? That the output resistance, if the open loop gain is very high, if Gm is infinite, how much is RO? If Gm is infinite, how much is the value of R out? 0. So, large, okay, the accurate value may come, but in divider will always come 1 plus Gm R. If Gm is infinity or very high, then the R out will keep going lower and lower values. Is that correct? Is that clear? If the gain, open loop gain is very high, Gms are very high, R out will keep falling as the gain increases. Is that correct? So, one of the requirement of OPAM was what? That the R out should be very low. R i is very high, already said VGS hi laga hua open circuit hai okay. R i is high, R out is low and how much is the gain I am talking? Very large open loop gains, is that correct? So, by connecting OPAM in the networks, the way I have connected which is a negative feedback connection. I am ensuring you that open loop gain is higher if then the output resistance is low and input resistance is high. Is that correct? This is essentially accurate value you can still get it. The point, yes. All that I am saying that I must somehow guarantee to you is much higher open loop gains. Okay. I think this is not correct. Okay. Now, once I say it, then I can write his equivalent circuit very easily. Please remember how, what is the equivalent circuit I am now saying. A typical op amp, I am now saying if there is my input voltage, I say there is no current inside minus terminal. Why do I say so or no current in the V plus terminal? Why do I say so? I can say so, okay, I will come back to it. This is my input, no current entering op amp. At the output, there is a voltage source which is V1 minus V2 times minus A. And what is this A? Open loop gain. Please remember, this is like a diffam stage followed by a single stage followed by buffer. Minus AOL, V1 minus V2 is your V0. Is that correct? I am assuming R0 very low and I am short removing it. In voltage source where R0 will appear? In a voltage source where resistance appears? Series or parallel? Series. Since the R in R out is 0 or very small, this resistance is treated as 0. So, this is my output terminal. The voltage which is appearing at the output is minus AOL times V1 minus V2. All that I said, no current enters minus or plus terminals. 
Okay. Now we will prove this why did I say so. Okay. If you see this amplifier once okay, let us do this first. If you do this, if R i is infinity, what does infinity means? Essentially a open circuit, but really there is nothing called infinity. So that means there will be a very large resistance connection between this and this, is that correct? So how much will be current? V minus minus V plus divided by R, what is the current in this Ri? V1 minus V2 by Ri is the current in I Ri, is that okay? Current in this, this voltage minus this voltage divided by the resistance in this. If R i is very very high, how much is I i? I r i extremely small or less than nano amps, less than nano amps. Is that clear to you? If that is very very small, we may say or practically 0, we may say this potential must be equal to this potential. When the current does not flow, what is the potential at the two end of any resistor? Same, that is why we say no current. So, we may say now if this difference potential is V minus V plus, the output is AV V minus V plus, which is VD, and if R i is very large, no current flows through this, means V minus must be equal to V plus. I repeat, is that clear? Why V minus is V plus? Because if we declare that R i is very, very high, no current flows, okay practically no current. That means the voltage difference between V minus and V plus must be extremely small close to 0. So, we say V minus must be equal to V plus. That is why in OPAM we keep saying V minus is same as V plus. We can see the same thing little differently again. We have a V minus V plus separate into A V is the output, is that correct? That just now from this circuit. A V into V D is the output. So, V D is A V 0 by A V, is that correct? Or V minus V plus is equal to V 0 by A V. If A V tends to infinity, how much is V D? V D tends to 0. So, V minus minus of V plus tends to 0. So, V minus is equal to V plus. So, either way if you look at it, why this is either way coming because in deriving this circuit I assumed R I infinite anyway that is why I derived this. Okay. So, it is not two different things but it is essentially saying both ways you see V minus will be equal to V plus in an op amp circuit provided the open loop gain is extremely high and therefore how much gain you expect at least should have 10 to power 4 and above or preferably 10 to power 5 and above. Okay. That is the reason. Now, let us say if I ground the V plus terminal, I physically ground this terminal, then according to me the potential at V minus is how much? What is the definition of a ground? If the current sinks at that potential, then it is ground, sinks, current must sink there. Yaha par current ground pe ja raha hai. So, we say it is physically grounded there. This is potential 0 kya, maha sub current sink ho gaya. However, in the OPAM, we said there is no really current flowing at V minus. However, these potentials are same because we say V plus is V minus. V plus are physically grounded. So, V minus has a 0 potential, but there is no current sinking there. Is that correct? I said V plus is V minus, V plus I made it 0 volt physically by grounding. So, V minus I am saying has a potential 0. Okay. However, that does not allow current to get in, we said it actually, which means though the potential is 0, no current sink is going on. Is that correct? Such a ground is called virtual ground. Is that correct? Why it is called virtual? because current does not sink there. Is that clear to you? Current does not sink there. Otherwise, it is ground. 
but it is not actual ground, it is virtual ground. The difference is clear to you, difference between actual ground and virtual ground. The potential is 0, one sinks the current, other does not sink the current, is that correct? Two potentials are same there. This is very interesting and that makes op-amp circuit solving easiest because once I make V plus 0, this terminal immediately I say at 0 potential. Is that clear? Once I make it 0 potential, this current, this current to solve that becomes extremely simple. Is that correct? So, this fact that the virtual ground exists only when DFAM has very high open loop gain and the input resistance is close to infinite. Under these conditions, we say OPAM can say V minus can be created as virtual ground. Now, here is a case which I must tell you what happens. This is very interesting case. This is question asked by many people in many interviews to many places including industry if you join. Okay. If this is your V n and this is your V 0, if you say this is at ground potential and actually show you show me like this. So, this means this is what is happening. This terminal is where is it? Ground. This is not the same as you have to get here. Is that clear to you? So, this is a potential divider where center terminal is grounded. Is that correct? So, this is not the same as V0. This is not the same as V0. If I have physically grounded it, तो ये R1 टर्मिनल के बाहर हो गया, तो ये ओपेम यदि वहाँ से निकाल लिया और इस टर्मिनल को ग्राउंड दिखा दिया, इसका मतलब क्या है? इसको तो निकाल ही सकते हैं हम, आपकी थ्योरी के अनुसार V0 इज माइनस R2 बाय R1 इनटू वीएन, पर अभी तो क्या होगा कि वीएन ही निकल जाएगा यदि इसको निकाल लिया तो, and the current is same here. Is that correct? This fact must be understood that OPAM's presence is a necessary to create a virtual ground and it is not a sinking ground. Is that correct? By putting this, this becoming a sinking ground. Is that correct? So, this V minus is not ground because then the output input is blocked. So, this is an essential feature we ask that is we always show ask this question. अरे यदि ये ground है तो इसको निकाल ही लेते हैं ना फिर इसकी क्या जरूरत है फिर यदि OPAM को हटा लिया तो भी आपका ground तो दिया पर ऐसा किया तो amplifier action चला गया उसमें से okay and as soon as I remove all infinite and all infinite case this is a divider which has no input then okay and that means this will not act like a system which you are looking for. Is that point clear? So, please do not consider that this is physical ground, this is only virtual ground. Once I say it is 0 potential, that is enough for me, I am not saying it is sinking any current. Is that point clear? Once I have in my mind, now I can say another net before I quit, no there are few more networks we can solve. Okay, here is ये R2 अभी बार-बार जो मैं दिखा रहा हूँ यहाँ पर, from here can you tell me if I want to increase the gain or output voltage or not gain output voltage, what should I increase? R2, either I should make R1 very small or make R2 very large. Okay, so larger the R2, larger is the gain. I am I know very well now from there, but then कितना R2 लगा सकते हैं? Typically R I is let's say of one megaohm. Okay. समझो R2 ten megaohm लगा दिया तो चलेगा क्या? नहीं नहीं आप सोचो ऐसा या hundred megaohm लगा आपको तो ratio चाहिए है आप तो voltage बढ़ाना चाहते हैं तो आप R2 बढ़ाते जाइए hundred megaohm कर दीजिए तो ten to power six gain मिल सकता है आपको. Okay. अब ये सवाल है कि R2 कितना बढ़ाया जाए? तो एक कंडीशन जो आप प्रूव कर सकते हैं, मैं भी कर सकता हूँ, आप करके देखिए कि it should not exceed और at least not equal to, it should be always less than the R I available to you. 
that is the condition you must do. This is one requirement. There is another requirement. Please look at it the real theory is what we go. As long as the ratio is what you adjust the gain can be same. I can have 100 k and 10 k for a game of 10, 10 ohm and 1 ohm also I can have 10. So, should I use 1 ohm, 10 ohm, 1 k, 10 k, 1 mega ohm, 10 mega ohm, kya values rakhna chahiye, kis pe dependent hai, ok, it does not cross ri that much I fixed, what, what values I should choose and what it depends on. R2 by R1 to ratio same rakha mein hai. 10 ohm by 1 ohm is 10, 100 ohm by 10 ohm is 10, 1 kilo ohm by 100 ohm is 10, 1 mega ohm by 100k is also 10. Kya values rakhna chai? As soon as I reduce the current, I actually reduce the power dissipation. Is that clear to you? So, the choice of values of resistances are decided by the maximum minimum currents provided to you in the logbook. Isse jada currents draw mat kariye. इसके अनुसार ही R चॉइस कर सकते ऐसा नहीं है रेशो तो आप किसके से भी ले सकते हैं 0.1 ओम और 1 ओम भी लगा सकते हैं तो करंट तो बहुत ह्यूज हो जाएंगे इज दैट करेक्ट सो वन हैज टू एक्सेप्ट बट टू हाई व्हाट इज द प्रॉब्लम आई से द फीडबैक प्रॉब्लम्स विल स्टार्ट देन आर आई के पास नहीं आना है आपको इज दैट क्लियर सो सम वे इफ यू वांट टू इंप्रूव गेन्स यू विल रिक्वायर R2 टू बी हायर बट यू डोंट वांट R2 टू बी टू हाई इज दैट करेक्ट सो व्हाट डू आई डू here is the solution. Okay. You replace your R2 by a T network. Is that clear to you? What is my problem? Why I do not want to increase larger gain ke liye R2 nahi badana chata? Because if I increase R2, it will come very close to Ri. Then I do not want that to happen. So I said, fine, abhi kya karein? a T network dal diya hmm? Even now, since it is a good op amp, I1 is equal to I2 because V minus because I put V plus as a ground equal to physically ground V minus is a virtual ground. So, the current starting from input will be same as current in the resistor R2 uh, this network is that clear. Let us say current in this circuit is I2 R2 mein ye thoda sa arrow mein ne upar liya hai automatically signs correct ho jayengi V by I karte samay ok. This potential I declare as Vx. This is V0, this is Vx. This is how much? Ye kitna volt hai yahan? 0, 0, virtual ground hai par. Aur ye Vn hai. Okay. Isme se current jo flow ho raha hai, R3 hai ye, sorry. Ye I3 hai, yahan I4 hai, aur yahan I2 hai. T network hai ye. Is that okay? I2, I4 and I3. However, I1 must be same as I2. Yahan se nikalne wala current is branch mein wohi hoga, ok. Because we already said virtual ground is created. No current, also please remember no current enters op-amp input. This is the reason why this is all possible, ok. Now, yeh potential kitna hoga? Let us look at this potential. Vx 0 Please look at it, 0 minus Vx divided by R2 is I2 or we can say I2 R2 is Vx with a minus sign, is that correct? A 0 minus Vx divided by R2 is I2, so minus I2 R2 is Vx. Kirchhoff law, though node ke beech mein voltage difference divided by resistance is the current, is that correct? this potential minus this potential divided by R2 is I2. So, minus I2 R2 is Vx. However, we say I2 is equal to I1, I2 is equal to I1, our op-amp requirement hai. So, ye I2 R2 is minus I1 R2, but how much is I1 because of the virtual ground? V in minus 0 divided by R1 is the I1. So, V in by R1 into R2 is my Vx. Is that okay? Vx is minus V in by R1 into R2. Now, we say at this node Vx, I2 is I2 plus I4 is I3. 
ये करण ये करण मस्ट बी ए करण इस नोड पर सम किया सबको इज दैट ओके आई एम समिंग करंट एट नोड वी एक्स एंट्रिंग करंट इज आई टू एंट्रिंग करंट इज आई फोर लिविंग करंट इज आई थ्री Now you say why opposite? It doesn't matter. I'll put minus sign correspondingly anyway. Okay. So I say I two plus I four is I three. But how much is I two? I just now calculated. How much is I two? For I two, यहाँ से कितना है? V x by R two. Is that correct? How much is I four? This one, this one number. Oh, yeah, four. Yeah, sorry. या ऐसा साइन लिया है पर माइनस ले लिया है मैंने इज दैट ओके आई एम अपोजिट करंट है ना तो वी एक्स बाय आर फोर इज आई एक्स आई आई आर फोर पर उसका साइन माइनस लेके इसलिए माइनस लिख दिया मैंने माइनस वी एक्स बाय आर फोर इज इक्वल टू वी एक्स माइनस वी जीरो बाय आर थ्री इज द आई थ्री करंट सम ऑफ द टू करंट एट द नोट इज इक्वल टू द थर्ड करंट ये माइनस साइन देख लिया ना आपको उल्टा साइन लिया था तो यहाँ भी माइनस ले लिया मैंने करस्पॉन्ड ये वी एक्स बाय आर ऐसा करंट था इसलिए माइनस ले लिया मैंने ठीक है सो दिस इज इक्वल टू दिस आई कलेक्टेड वी एक्स टर्म्स फ्रॉम ऑल ऑफ दैट सो आई गेट वी एक्स इज इक्वल टू वन अपॉन आर टू प्लस वन अपॉन आर थ्री प्लस वन अपॉन आर फोर इज वी जीरो बाय आर थ्री बट हाउ मच इज वी एक्स अभी कितना निकाला था मैंने वी एक्स माइनस वी एन बाय आर वन टाइम्स आर टू निकाला है ना वी एक्स वो उसको सब्सटीट्यूट कर दिया हुआ मैंने दिस इज माई वी एक्स सो माइनस वी एन बाय आर वन इन टू आर टू इन टू वन अपॉन आर टू प्लस आर थ्री प्लस आर फोर इज वी जीरो बाई आर थ्री इज दैट ओके इक्वेशन में सिर्फ सब्सटीट्यूशन किया जा रहा है फाइनली hmm? इसके अनुसार मैंने वी जीरो बाय वी एन निकाला वी जीरो बाय वी एन निकाला so that is minus r2 by r1 into 1 plus r3 by r4 r3 by r2 now can you see if i did not have t network to so gain kahan se bada tha main r2 se bada tha ab mere paas kitni turn mili aur mere paas r3 aur r4 turns aur hai mere paas so main inki value adjust kar sakta hu रेशो में जो कि ज्यादा नहीं होंगी और वो एडिशनल ट्वाइस थ्राइस टेन टाइम्स ये तो इनिशियल है ही आपके पास आर टू बाय आर वन ना इसकी वैल्यू को भी मैं एडजस्ट करके गेन को बढ़ा सकता हूँ इज दैट पॉइंट क्लियर व्हाट डिड आई से इफ दिस टर्न वुड नॉट हैव बीन देयर दिस इज अ नॉर्मल एम्पलीफायर आर टू बाय आर वन एंड इफ आई वॉन्ट लार्जर गेन आर टू आई वुड इंक्रीज ना आई से डोंट इंक्रीज आर टू ओके But adjust R3, R4, R3, R2 ratios, which may not be very high. Okay, resistance may not be very high, and still boost the voltage gain. Is that clear? So now, is that point clear? Many times the limitation may come on your resistor values. Is that correct? Then don't say, sir, now I gain. How do I grow? No tricks. Okay, one trick. Look, there are other tricks. आप आइडिया लगाओ कि ऐसे नेटवर्क क्यों बनाए गए थे नेटवर्क थ्योरी में वेन वी आर टीचिंग नेटवर्क थ्योरी टी नेटवर्क पाई नेटवर्क एवरीथिंग यू आर नॉट वेरी कीन वी आर ओनली सॉल्विंग देयर सो मैंने आज आपको दिखाया कि नहीं वो टी नेटवर्क कहाँ हमारे फायदे में आ सकता था आई जस्ट शोड यू इज दैट क्लियर दिस इज हाउ यू एक्चुअली प्ले द गेम्स ओके सो दिस एसेंशियली does whatever most of you have already done but not in this format i am sure this was not the format before we quit let's quickly see by same logic a inverting amplifier pehle dekha abhi non in, what is inverting means minus r2 by n1 is a phase shift of 180 degree so we say inverting if i apply a input at the v plus okay and still we assume r i is infinity and a o l is high v minus is still v plus so ye the ye v in hai to ye bhi v in hi hai then i calculate current i1 i calculate current i2 so i2 is v in minus v0 by r2 i1 is i2 is equal to v0 by i1 so v in by r1 please remember this is v in फिर से देखो ये वीन है तो ये भी वीन है इज दैट क्लियर सो ये आई वन कितना है Q 
कितना i1 है जीरो माइनस वी एन बाय आर वन इज द आई आई वन वही लिखा है मैंने माइनस वी एन बाय आर वन इज वी एन माइनस वी जीरो बाय आर टू दे आर इक्वल करंट सेम करंट फ्लोइंग बोथ साइड सॉल्व किया तो वी जीरो बाय वी एन इज वन प्लस आर टू बाय आर वन प्लस साइन आया सो इट इज कॉल्ड नॉन इन्वर्टिंग गेन नॉन इन्वर्टिंग एम्पलीफायर वी जीरो वी एन आर प्लस नाउ वन प्लस आर टू बाय आर वन इफ आई वॉन्ट ए नॉन इन्वर्टिंग एम्पलीफायर विथ ए गेन ऑफ हंड्रेड वॉट शुड बी रेशियो ऑफ आर टू बाय आर वन नाइन्टी नाइन डोंट से हंड्रेड ओके इज नाइन्टी नाइन इज दैट क्लियर सो करस्पॉन्डिंगली यू मस्ट एडजस्ट द वैल्यूज बट इफ इट इज द इन्वर्टिंग एम्पलीफायर देन वॉट शुड बी द रेशियो वॉट शुड बी द वैल्यू Hundred because it's minus R two by R one. Is that clear? So there is slight difference in ratios when we do inverting and non-inverting amplifier. Ek last circuit. There is a non-inverting amplifier with R one not present and R two also not present. Okay, I am connecting V minus to the output. Okay, there is no R one, there is no R two. I am just connecting V minus to the output. And then apply input at the V plus terminal. Okay. Now you can see V zero is V minus, same terminal hai, but V minus is V plus. So V zero is V in because V plus is V in. So V zero by V in is one. Is that correct? So V zero is V in. What is this circuit? I say called voltage follower or a buffer. Voltage follower or a बफर नाउ दिस सेकेंड वर्ड वाई आर रोड और बफर बफर की एक क्वालिटी होती है वॉट इज द क्वालिटी ऑफ ए बफर दैट द इनपुट रेजिस्टेंस एंड आउटपुट रेजिस्टेंस कैन बी मैच टू एनी इनपुट साइड टू आउटपुट साइड दैट इज द बफर पार्ट इज दैट क्लियर वॉट इज बफर मीन्स इसका एक रेजिस्टेंस बहुत ज्यादा या बहुत कम है और दूसरा बहुत ज्यादा या बहुत कम है उधर में तो दोनों को बीच में बफर करते हैं इसको इससे मैच करते हैं इसको इससे मैच करते हैं दैट इज द बफर रिक्वायरमेंट Now let's take a case why buffers are required. I have a sensor like a mechanical का आदमी है जो का strain gauge है, उसका resistance बहुत ज़्यादा रहता है 100 के. Okay. If you have a strain gauge which creates a voltage of say V in with a series resistance of 100 k, and it has to be sent to a load of 1 k. ये normal circuit है, ये sensor का V zero V in 100 के का सीरीज में है इसको आउटपुट पर 1 के का लोड को ड्राइव करना है तो v0 जीरो बाई कितना होगा 1 के अपॉन हंड्रेड वन के तो कितना मिला आपको एक्चुअली 0.01 जीरो मिला तो पहले ही वीन छोटा रहता है सेंसर का आउटपुट बहुत छोटा रहता है ओके अब तो आउटपुट पे कितना मिला 100 टाइम लेस मिला इज दैट क्लियर सो तो आपको कुछ फायदा ही नहीं हुआ आपको लगाया कि फिर तो आप कभी ड्राइव कर ही नहीं सकते आगे तो इसका मतलब कुछ तो गड़बड़ हो गया है नहीं वट डज दैट मीन दिस हैज स्टार्टेड लोडिंग दिस इज कॉल्ड लोडिंग इफेक्ट इफ आई हैव ए स्मॉल रेजिस्टेंस हियर विच हैज ए लार्ज सीरीज रेजिस्टेंस तो एक्चुअली इसके आने वाला वोल्टेज तो इनपुट से भी कम हो गया ओके एटलीस्ट इट शुड हैव क्रॉस द इनपुट इफ नथिंग एज वो भी नहीं मिला मुझे सो आई डोंट लाइक सच कनेक्शन सो आई से ठीक है इसके बीच में एक सर्किट डाल देता हूँ बफर करता हूँ ये इससे मैच कर जाए और ये इससे मैच कर जाए इसका इनपुट इसके साथ मैच करे इसका आउटपुट इसके साथ मैच करे इस सर्किट का ऐसा यदि मैंने कर दिया तो दिस विल नॉट लोड द अदर सर्किट इनपुट विल नॉट बी लोडेड बाय द आउटपुट दैट्स व्हाई यू नीड ए वर्ड बफर इज दैट करेक्ट सो किसी भी इंस्ट्रूमेंटेशन एम्पलीफायर के साथ में पहला स्टेज क्या होगा बफर स्टेज होगा कि सेंसर अनोन रहते हैं उनके रेजिस्टेंस बहुत ज्यादा वेरिएबल रहते हैं ईसी लिया जो मीटर है जहां से सोर्स आप प्रोब ले रहे हैं उसका वन मेगा ओम तक रेजिस्टेंस आ सकता है क्योंकि नहीं तो शॉक मार सकता है बहुत रेजिस्टेंस हाई रखते हैं ना सच आउटपुट तो ईसी जी दिखेगा ही नहीं आपको कुछ तो यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड वाई वी डू ऑल दिस गेम्स बिकॉज इन रियालिटी वी डोंट कनेक्ट अदरवाइज सो हियर इज समथिंग आई से ठीक है एक वोल्टेज फॉलोवर लगा देता हूँ मैं एक हंड्रेड के ये है यहां आने वाला आउटपुट 
सेम होना चाहिए एटलीस्ट उतना तो भी मिलना चाहिए मुझे अब कंडीशन क्या होना चाहिए इसके लिए इसका इनपुट रेजिस्टेंस जो है कितना होना चाहिए एटलीस्ट हंड्रेड के से ज्यादा होना चाहिए तो लोड नहीं करेगा वो यदि ये रेजिस्टेंस वन मेगाओम से ज्यादा है तो ये इसका करंट इसके साथ मैच नथिंग विल एंटर इन दैट सो ओनली वोल्टेज विल अपियर हियर दैट इज फॉलोड एट दी आउटपुट इज दैट करेक्ट इफ दिस रेजिस्टेंस इज वेरी वेरी हाई विच इज वॉट ओपैम विल प्रोवाइड यू this will only create a voltage which is proportion no current passing so no drop here is that correct no current passing in 100k so this voltage appears here it's followed as it is at the output and it doesn't worry what resistance you are putting at the output is that correct this is buffered it so why buffers is that clear buffers are essential part in any unknown sources okay otherwise like antenna of a mobile okay it has a 75 ohm balloons as we call okay internally antennas ab baki circuit 50 ohm pe rehta hai okay usko ek transform karke aana padta hai usko bolte hai balloon so is isko isse match kar deta hai everywhere you need some kind of an amplifier whose input should get protected from the output is that clear clear 1k does not affect now 100k side circuit because this has very large resistance allow all of its to appear here and as follower all that will come out is that clear so abhi aapko iske across full v vn mil gaya is that clear now if you wish you can further boost it by r2 by r1 if you need the first stage must be a voltage follower is that okay thank you for the day